Did you know you could hop on a jet and fly from Canada to Mexico in less than eight hours? But it takes a monarch butterfly about two months. Still, every year, millions of them make that trip to escape the winter cold and follow the migration of their ancestors. It's made the monarch a figure in Mexican folklore and modern-day mystery. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. The monarch butterfly. One, two, a bunch. Now, listen. That's the sound of butterflies. The sound of millions of butterflies fluttering through thin sunlight. They come to winter here, high in the mountains of Mexico, every October, at the end of one of the most incredible migrations on our Earth, flying thousands of miles to get here. It's a hazy morning. We're hiking up El Rosario Reserve. Sorry to witness this mysterious miracle. Air's getting thinner. Now, under threat. I just need to catch my breath. We're at 9,000 feet above sea level. After a hard hour of trekking, finally, we spot them. Those dark patches that look like muscles clinging to rocks on a beach. Those big, yeah. black uh, clumps are butterflies. Exactly. Yeah. And they're still sleeping. Yeah. Millions of sleeping butterflies huddled together for warmth, their closed wings muting their trademark orange. Watch where you're stepping. There are monarchs all over the forest floor. When it's at least 60 degrees and sun rays reach their branches, they wake up, stretch their wings. They're actually shivering, cold, not fear. He's a female. Yeah. She's shivering. Shivering is... Uh, oh, she's shivering? Yeah. Because it's still a little chilly this morning. Yeah. You're witnessing extraordinary access. Tourists are not allowed in this far. We're only here because we're with Eduardo Rendon Salinas, the monarch bigwig for the World Wildlife Fund. They come here from as far away as Winnipeg, Canada. They weigh less than an ounce. That's over 2,000 miles clean across the US for a passenger plane, maybe an eight hour flight. For monarchs, maybe two months on the wind to within a few hundred feet of where their ancestors wintered the year before and the year before that. Is this still on my head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice hat right now. <laughs> Why does this happen? The weather is the key. They escape from the winter in Canada and the States. They can survive the, the winter. How does this happen? No one really knows. How the monarchs can to fly a great distance yeah. is a mystery. Monarchs you might see in your yard in summer are little, short-lived, but in the fall in the northern US and Canada, a superhero generation is born. Bigger, stronger, lives eight months and capable of crossing a continent. That's my hand, a sense of scale. Yes. Once a year, this freak generation is born that makes this migration. Exactly. Locals have long known the butterflies arrive late October, just before the Day of the Dead. Legend has it, they're the spirits of the departed. The pre-Hispanic cultures know the, the monarchs. So we're talking at least 500 years, but it wasn't until 1975 that Scientists proved they came from so, so far away. How is still a mystery they're trying to solve. Kansas-based Monarch Watch mobilizes volunteers along the migration route to tag the insects as they head south. They estimate about 80,000 got tagged in 2017, of which only 1% will be recovered. Look, oh, they find an attack, yeah. Against the odds, we found one, called it into HQ. Number is X. U T one two one. The very next morning, we skyped with Pam Bird, a tagger in Lakey, Texas, 700 miles away. Hello, Pam. I'm Nick, and this is Eduardo. Nice to meet you, Pam. Very nice to meet you both. We found one of your butterflies. I know. I can't believe this. I feel like I won the lottery. <laughs> Thank you for your job because it's very, very important this day. That Thank you for your participation on your end as well. It's, it's just magic that yeah, we can work together like this. Another slice of magic, monarchs drinking from a stream. This is where tourists mingle with them. I mean, this is amazing. It's beautiful out here. No, I feel like uh, I'm in heaven. Just being out here and seeing these things is just, it's cool, you know, you're one with them. 1996 was the year with the largest number of monarchs wintering here, covering 44 acres 
of forest. And this is the biggest colony of monarchs in the world? In the world, yes. This is the most important spot of monarchs right now. In 2013, monarchs covered less than two acres, the lowest area in recorded history. Experts say it's partially due to climate change, more hurricanes on the migration route and a freak snowstorm here in 2016 that killed millions. Illegal logging is also a problem. Enter Eduardo. Big hat, big smile, big ideas. He and the WWF rallied the locals, teaching them that preserving the monarchs could be more profitable and rewarding. Tourism is booming. They're growing trees to reforest and mushrooms to sell. The problem for the monarchs is now largely in the U.S. Herbicides killing milkweed plants along the migration routes. Monarchs will only lay their eggs on milkweed. If you live on those roots, you can make a difference. Just by planting some milkweed? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Not only the government, the people. Now, are you going to go home and plant milkweed in your yard so oh, that these got, things we survive? Have, we have lots of milkweed in our yard. Milk. <laughs> we'll just got stop it anyway. it up. Back in the forest, Eduardo is blowing on a monarch to warm her up. I give him... Yeah. Perfect. Well Beautiful. done. Yeah. You saved one. One. <laughs> I'm trying to save million of them. <laughs> I'm Nick for Nightline in Michoacan, Mexico. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.